Hey everyone, how's it going? I、uh, wanted to talk a little bit here in a walkthrough about creating realistic sounding orchestral mockups. So what I've done here is I just had this idea, but a week ago or so, I wanted to make a mockup of、um, David Arnold's、uh, Stargate theme. So just like the basic theme, I have like the first forty seconds here. This walkthrough will. It's not just about creating mockups of existing pieces. It's also just about the overall creating realism with your own tracks, you know, whatever you're doing. So I just wanted to play through this, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing and yeah, stuff like that. All right, let's check it out. Right, so that is the track.、Um, so one of the things that I think is like one of the most important things when starting out with this is to have a very good overview of what the an actual orchestra sounds like. You know, like I would recommend listening to a lot of classical music, a lot of film music, just to get that kind of overview, like of the ranges, the textures, the timbre, all of that.、Um, yeah, I mean, I myself coming from a more of an ear. Background, you know, I started playing piano when I was younger, and it was all about the ear. You know, my reading and writing abilities when it comes to the score, very basic. So I mean, I can get through a score, but it's you know, it's gonna take some time. And、um, so yeah, really getting that overview. Also, of course, jumping into some orchestration books. Well, not jumping into them, but, you know, opening a few of those books, checking out the instruments, the ranges, and everything I just said. So those things for me are like crucial, and they're so important to really. Understand the flow of of the lines and the swells of the French horns and so on to really get that overview. Once again,、um, let's see a little bit here what I'm doing here for this particular thing. Once again, this is also just an overall walkthrough for your own pieces, not just if you're creating a mockup of somebody else's. I'm using Cinematic Studio strings, of course, as usual. <laughs> That's all I use nowadays.、Um, we have. Some basic things happening here, you know. It's just that. Let's see here.、Uh, I'm gonna remove my automation. I have sometimes I set an automation on the output just to create a little bit more of the high points. I wanna get it flowing up to that point, and then I bring it down a little bit. Cause you know I get lazy and I'm like, ah,、uh, it's clipping. I don't care. It sounds good. <laughs> That's fine. For this particular walkthrough, ignore the clipping. I'm gonna remove the automation just to be able to move the. Uh, fader up and down. So we're using, as I said, cinematic studio strings.、Um, let's see what it sounds like. All right. So when it comes to this realism, it's once again about listening to what the actual orchestra sounds like. So you'll you'll learn that, of course, they have a natural swell in their playing. You know, this particular intro has very starting soft, and、uh, going higher in dynamics, and then just having this overall swell. You know, down, up, down, just like trying to mimic what an actual violin section would sound like.、Um, so I have that is just happening there. Let's just see the whole little section. The section is pretty basic, you know, except for the the melody going on. I'm just kind of filling out what I hear from the mockup. You know, going back and forth, constantly referencing David Arnold's original. Track and just trying to hear what what is going on. What can I hear? A lot of things I can't hear. So then I'm just gonna be you know, forget that. You know I can't I can't make out what they're doing. So we have very basics: the low,、uh, double basses, cello, just playing octaves. I think we have. I added another one just for the sake of it, just playing the melody. And then I'm just filling out a little bit here with the violas to create you know the basics, the you know the root, the fifth, the third. Spreading these things out, so you feel that your section feels good because this is a section that is not. I'm not. This is not a solo section here. So you have the brass and everything else going on, 
So it's fine just to be a little lazy if you feel like it, because once again, it's not going to be featured. It's just if you feel you have everything kind of like, yep, it's covered. It's not going to be performed live. It's, if it's going to be performed live, it's different. Then you might tweak your, your writing. You might flesh it out more, have more fun with it. But if it's not, then don't worry so much about that. Think more about the things that really stick out, you know, as the melody with the trumpet melody in this particular thing. So the basics here, uh, let's see what they're doing. Sounds nice, cinematic sort of strings. Um, but yeah, it's very basic. I'm even kind of sloppy with some of these melody lines. You know, the... Do -do 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 -do. Uh, they're not really played perfectly. You know, that's fine. You know, in the context of things, it will work. Once again, it's just referencing uh, the track that I'm in this particular case, uh, Stargate. Or if you're making your own and, and, and you, you still might have in mind... Ah, this is a modern hybrid piece, you know, you're making, and uh, you want it to sound a similar production, like, you know, let's say Hans Zimmer. I'm not talking about the composition, only the production. So you might be constantly going back and forth just to see, you know, oh, well, everything balanced here, is everything good, is it similar, you know, in the mix? Because um, that's what I'm doing a lot here, too. I had to tweak a little bit of my, well, a lot on the violins here, removing, like, so much from 200 below and then boosting a little bit up there. Just only because that's what I wanted it to sound like, uh, similar to the original. Um, so yeah, besides these things, um, also fun to add a little. So in the original track, Stargate, I know they're doing some weird trills in the violins. I cannot really make out the notes. It's almost impossible. But they're doing some sort of trill marcado, like a... And... Uh, so, you know, I can spend hours just being a nerd trying to see, oh, how can I make it sound, you know, similar. But of course it's not going to be that similar, but it's just something to add more. Like if I remove these and just listen to this guy here. Yeah, it's just a legato line. That's fine. And then you add a little bit of this weirdness. Alone, it's going to sound probably a little bit weird. But it's just one of those things, like, now this is a particular thing because it was used in the original. But if it's your own, you know, if you ever get that sense of, ah, it's kind of naked here, it's boring. Try to add a little bit of just, it could be a pre-recorded phrase, it could just be something where you feel, yeah, it's 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 something in making it feel more uh, realistic in, in, you know, some way. It's just about, you know, getting that sense of realism going. It's such a subtle thing, but as some uh, super nerd, I will spend just a lot of time trying to <laughs> have fun with that. Um, let's see, another thing. So in the intro here, I'm going to jump down to the, in this particular track, I think they're using a gong or they're using like tubular bells or something. So this is something I also recommend is when you have a weak spot in your, in the samples, you feel like no matter what I do, I just can't make them sound more realistic or as realistic as I want. So for this particular thing, I'm using a gong in the intro to create, create a sense of space. Like that little thing, uh, if I remove it, it's going to sound... It sounds good, of course, but it's still a little bit more clear that it samples. But adding this gives it a little bit more like, ah, you can't really make out, but it's something... Make it out, it's just something in the background. So things like that, where you feel it's exposed, I would definitely recommend, um, yeah, adding certain things that are like creating a sense of, you know, atmosphere or something in the background there. Uh, other things that I use would be as, you know, as if you're a conductor, you're standing there in front of the orchestra. If you ever get the chance to do that, I've never done it. But it's tempo changes, you know, this particular track if this is the kind of track you're doing it is more of a flowing feel like a rubato kind of wherever the conductor wants to take the tempo so i mean it's not a modern Hans Zimmer driven percussion driven uh, track where the tempo might stay the same so especially when it's leading up to a climax or it's like 
fading down or, you know, accelerando or whatever is going on in the track. Sorry, retardando. Uh, anything where you feel, ah, oh, let's get a tempo change happening here to emphasize more what's going on. So if I have this obnoxious click going on at the same time, we, we can kind of hear. Uh, let's see where it is. So that that definitely gives me more sense of realism, this kind of flowing thing back and forth. And, you know, just keep listening to, like I said before, classical, film music, whatever, to just get a sense of how is it moving? Where do I want it to, 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 to these things to happen and to create that kind of breath uh, in the orchestra? Uh, it's definitely a, an important thing to create more realism. Um, so that's down here. Um, let's just go into a little brass. French horns, I am using um, angry brass, angry French horns from performance samples. Uh, Jasper Blanc, uh, the owner there, sampled these a while ago. So they're free. Go out and download them. They're fantastic. They are marcato patches, so they will end after like a few bars. But that still worked for this track, so... A thing, another thing would be picking the samples that fit your idea or your track. So I was trying Cinebrass, you know, it's a great library. Didn't work for this. I felt, no, it's too, this is too modern, too good. It's too Hollywood, even though this is a Hollywood kind of thing. Uh, but with these angry French horns. I don't know, they just have a little bit more of that. Uh, traditional sound. So what I'm using is the angry French horns, doubling them with sample modeling. So sample modeling is something I use a lot for these traditional tracks. Not for the modern Hans Zimmer style things, but for these kind of things. So you have, here's a solo, it's a French horn. Four, you have four solos. Uh, so you can really, you know, push these up. Really easy control with the expression. I wouldn't use these alone. I mean, if it's a solo uh, section, something happening, you're playing at like mezzo piano. Or, you know, even softer, then it works nicely. But I use these to, to double with the thicker um, French one here. And besides that, I am also detuning. Let's jump into this. So with detuning, it gives even more sense of realism. Uh, for instance, Angry Brass here, I am not doing 4 to 40, I'm going 4 to 44. You can do whatever you want where you feel, ah, now we're pushing it. Now it sounds actually pretty freaking awful. But just getting that sense of an edge, that tension, it gives it more, reali more realism. Let's see. Hmm, sounds like a high school orchestra there. No, I'm kidding. So you just have fun with that, whatever you feel like, just detune slightly. You'll get that kind of tension and it feels more realistic because it's human beings playing them and they cannot be perfectly in tune all the time. Uh, so we have that. Same thing as with uh, the violins, you know, it's all about the, the breath, it's all about the dynamics as well. Um, so I would recommend, as before, you just uh, listen to a lot of performances, how they sound, using that mod wheel to really get it. And it just gives it more life. Like, you're playing it stagnant all the time on the same mod, mod wheel. It works, of course, and it probably would have been perfect for a Hans Zimmer modern thing. But for this, I want more realism, so it's about writing that mod wheel and, uh, yeah, just having fun with it. Uh, angry trombones, the same. Also uh, amazing. And there are actually three, three uh, bass trombones, so they only go up to the high, not even high C, just the B up there. Uh, they will also die out after a few bars, but, you know, doesn't matter. It worked for this. And they have this easy playability, you know. 
I didn't use Caspian and uh, also by performance samples because this was an old template and I just like, yeah, this sounds great. I'm just gonna use that. I guess I'm a little lazy, but. So they have that nice playability. They're not doing that much in this particular track. So for me, a lot about the brass section is about you have, of course, a tuba doing its thing down there. You get the uh, trombones in this particular thing. They're not doing that much because we have so much going on with the trumpet section and the French horn counter melody, you know, so there's a lot of activity there. Uh, so basically just getting them at a nice mezzo forte or maybe mezzo piano volume to just kind of fill in in the background there. And then they will die out, you know, doesn't matter. So I have these things playing like that. <laughs> you know, they say that yeah, getting to, to the next note should be an easy passage, you know, what do you say, like... But I'm, like, jumping all over the place. Doesn't matter. Who cares? It's not going to be performed live, so who gives a crap? Um, but just getting that in there, and then I have trailer brass, just as, like, a pad. I, I felt I needed something down there just to fill it out, and these are actually sustained. So they're just basically being very stagnant doing that filling out um so that's kind of like the french horn thing i'm doing here and then and the trombones and then we go up to trumpets so once again this is sample modeling works perfectly for these types of traditional because you can push them really nicely like the the real dynamics of them like going soft So I'm definitely uh, recommending to get sample modeling. It's just so much fun for these types of tracks. You can add a vibrato too with the mod wheel. Oh, hold on. Yeah, you can. Quite lovely. No, but uh, you know, just. Getting that realism, and that's the, I guess that's a debate in, in classical music. Should the trumpet section, you have a solo trumpet player adding a little vibrato or not? You know, a lot of people are against it, a lot of for it. I love it when it's just at the right amount. So same there about going back to the referencing and just getting the, the idea of how a performance would be by listening to a lot of music. So for this, we have uh, the expression going... <laughs> That wasn't even that great of a performance in the end. I mean, they probably would have said, no, let's do that again. Uh, but so you have the nice little curve here, adding a little bit of modu I mean, uh, vibrato, uh, just to create a little bit more of, ah, it feels more elegant in a way for me. You can do too much and it goes up like, That might have even worked too. That was kind of nice, even more heroic. So with sample modeling, I use a reverb that is in Space Designer in Logic, if you have Logic. So this is a, I think I've talked about it before. It's from um, Altiverb. It's Todd A.O., the hall, the studio they recorded in. And you're just wrapping that around the instrument. I mean, you really, if you if you remove it, you just have like a regular tail reverb, you have... A little bit more naked, I mean, not naked, but more dry, more jazzy almost. Almost like an 80s uh, film score where the trumpets would be more. <laughs> Whatever the hell that was. <laughs> but so you add this reverb, it just wraps around it nicely. And that's the sample modeling sound. So same, you have the solo here, trumpet one, then you can have two, three, and together in unison, I mean, not unison, but as a section, it just sounds nicer than if you're loading an ensemble patch where you have so many players when you play the chords, it just doesn't sound nice. But here... A 
Oh, let's just see what the, the brass section alone. Oh, now that I see this little guy here. So a little bit about the melody here in the violins. It's about that the actual melody should be more clear that it's like and din 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 so you're having these notes that are playing as opposed to just having the long legato line din 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 but the the violins now they kind of sound like they're just doing that long uh, legato line so if you have something of like that we feel a melody line can't really come through uh just add another instrument for this i used a solo french horn to boost that it's doing It's not even a French horn doing that in the original. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel is just, I needed to add something. To, that melody isn't cutting, coming through in those repeated notes like that. Add something else. Um, so that's that with the brass. Yeah, I was just going to listen to. By itself, it doesn't sound that amazing. You know, it sounds okay. But once again, it's about the context of everything. Um, Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. It's just, you know, sometimes it's like everything in context sounds great. But alone, you're like, nah, that was <laughs> not that awesome. Um, so we have the gong here doing that. When it comes to harp, you know, adding a little bit of these flavors in your track, you can add harp. Uh, you can add more fun with the wind, woodwinds, you know, some flute things. Adding some more percuss percussive stuff here, glockenspiel, as you're doing in this track. These are like add extras and textures and flourishes to, to add to your track. You can think of like the basics, the low end, uh, the brass, and then a little higher, the strings, the mid strings, the top, and then in the very top, you can add these things for effect. Um, so when it comes to the harp in this track, I only have the harp from East West. Uh, it's old, it's like 10 years old, no, not 10 years, but, and it doesn't even have the notes I wanted it. It had these pre-recorded, uh... <laughs> you know, I don't even know what that is. It's uh, just a Gliss 9, I guess it's major 9. But that these notes are not even right in the actual chord that I'm trying to use. So once again, about covering up certain things, using what you have. So you can, of course, use your expression to just... Or getting them out of there quickly. It's like, oh, that note, no, I'm not going to use the top note. So just try to get that out of there. But these definitely are oh, using harp glissandos like this. Such a cliche or traditional but it just works, not sustain, it just works so nicely um, for effect. You know, adding that on, on, on coming into our crescendo here up to the, the main part, adding that in combination with, of course, timpani, you have the timpani roll, the cymbal roll, something I use all the time, it's also a little cliche, cliche. you're using that coming into a climax or coming into a next passage, you get that timpani roll and then you get that cymbal crash on the one these things just work and they will help drive your track forward um we can see with that gong and then the symbol <laughs> it sounds like almost comical when you're alone but in context with everything so definitely adding those things in this particular track they used a little bit of glockenspiel together with uh, some flute staccatos just doing its that's at least what I could hear them doing um, so yeah have fun with those things at the top you know don't worry so much about the expression here and there with that just like yeah it's, it's a staccato thing you just keep it up there finding the right volume uh, just experimenting in the mix you know what it what it what volume it should be Mine could have been louder. I mean, for Christ's sake, I can't even hear them. So I should have definitely gotten them up a little bit more in volume. Um, but yeah, those things are just fun. And it, I mean, okay, yeah, this is not going to be performed live. But if it were, would be, then yeah, these things are fun for the player, you know? And it's just doing a little bit of these things. Uh, overall, I think going back to, to, to sum it up here, 
Uh, one more thing would be to, when you're referencing whatever track, if there's another track, or if you're actually making a mock-up of an existing track, going back and forth constantly to check like EQs and like, what, what am I missing here? And I'm, I'm doing that a lot. I'm trying to uh, get the specific sound I wanted. I had to boost a little bit on the highs here. And some particular instruments like the trumpet, I had to remove a lot from about 8,000 there and then boosting a little bit on 800 or something. And that's just to, to get it closer to what I wanted with the original. So these are, are things that I, I, I do I tend to do to just see what uh, what is missing. Uh, but other than that, I don't think I'm doing much more. You know, got these things that that some of the woodwinds. Yeah, just also just to, to create a little bit in the intro with the east-west thing. But that you can barely even hear that. That was only for like effect in the very intro here. You just hear them a little bit in the intro. Um, so yeah, one last thing when it comes to the timpani, when it comes to percussion, is that if you're not making a super modern, awesome, cool percussion-driven track, uh, which you know would be that would be a lot of times that's the drive of a track, the percussion in these modern tracks. But if you're making more of a traditional, like this or John Williams, whatever, I think even he said, you know, using uh, percussion as using them as accents. In this case, it's very simple to hear the accents because they're just uh, playing along with, with the chord changes. Well, let's just see, uh, maybe together with some of the... So those accents, instead of having a constant beat, like imagining a drum beat where you have the constant flow of those drums, no, here you have the orchestra and then you have the percussion as more of accents to just kind of emphasize, maybe timpani roll up to the one, the climax, or just a little accents here and there to create more. So that's, you know, getting a little bit more realistic with that instead of having a constant beat in that. Um, yeah, now I really think that's all I'm thinking when I'm doing it. Just just having fun with that and then the brass and then this and this. And yeah, I think that's just all I do. And um, let's just listen one last time. Uh, once again, ignore the clipping. And let's see what it sounds like. So, yeah, I think there you have it. I, I can't think of anything else right now that I'm doing. But, yeah, just start listening to... I mean, of course, you probably are already listening to lots of classical music and film music, but more and more and more and get that overview of the orchestra and just try to have fun with the natural sense of how they're performing and playing. All right, that would be all, folks. So, thanks for watching. Take care.